One of the reasons why we're here today is because of Terry Albury. Terry Albury um, is an, was an FBI agent in Minneapolis, and people still don't know about what happened with him, but I, I want to make sure that more people hear his story, because his story is important. He was arrested because he told the media about what the FBI was doing to abuse its power. He sent the FBI's manuals to an online news source, The Intercept, and he was caught telling the media about what the FBI does. And he was the only black FBI agent in Minneapolis, and the reason why he did it was because he was troubled by the way that the FBI shows prejudice, shows, intimidates minority communities and profiles people, and not only people outside the FBI, but people inside the FBI, too. And he's not the only one who said this. Um, the FBI is pretty much a white male culture, and if you don't fit into that, then you're not accepted as much. So he, but he was troubled by what he was being asked to do, and they caught him, he, they, they arrested him, and he's now charged with unauthorized disclosure of national security information. So. The federal government is prosecuting him. They're claiming he is harming the war on terrorism because he's telling the truth to the public about the FBI's abuses. And that's just wrong. I think we're actually better as a country and stronger if we're willing to face the truth about what our government agencies are doing wrong, if we're willing to fix the problems. But they just want to cover it up. They just want to charge him with harming national security. So he hasn't been able to speak to the public since he was arrested because he's taking a plea bargain deal. But they want to charge him and send him to jail for four to five years in jail, plus a very substantial fine, maybe six-figure fine. And part of the reason why they're doing it is because they claim that leaking a secret document to the media is an abuse of the public trust. And his lawyers say, no, that's not an abuse of the public trust. They claim they want a larger sentence because he's abusing the public trust. So I want to read a little from his lawyer's statements because that's important. It says, his conduct in this case was, he hasn't been able to, Terry Albury has not been able to speak directly, but his lawyers have been able to speak. They say, his, Terry Albury is a good and honorable man. His conduct in this case was an act of conscience. It was driven by his belief that there was no viable alternative to remedy the abuses he sought to address. He recognizes that what he does, did was unlawful. It has long been a critique of the FBI that it consists of and reflects a predominantly white male culture, which as a result has often treated minority communities with suspicion and disrespect. These criticisms are especially resonant in the terrorism context. For, terrorism, for Terry, the only African-American field agent in the Minneapolis office, the problem of racism both within the FBI and its interactions with minority communities was especially pronounced. The situation became even more acute for him when, having previously served a tour for the FBI in Iraq, he was assigned to the counterterrorism squad and was required firsthand to implement FBI investigation directives that profiled and intimidated minority communities in Minnesota and other locations in which Terry served. Witnessing all this, and as an African American being subjected to himself and himself directly in some instances, profoundly affected Terry professionally and personally. The tensions and conflicts within him became unbearable, and he acted. In cases that involve unauthorized disclosures of matters of public interest, there is always the claim that the person making the disclosure should have pursued remedies through official channels. Here, for reasons that will be amplified in our sentencing submission, Terry did not view this option as viable. So he joined the FBI as an intern when he was in college in 2000, worked at the FBI for 17 years. He was three years away from being able to re retire with a full pension, and he gave that up because he thought it was important to alert the public to what he was required to do when he was profiling Somali communities in Minnesota. And he, the documents that he showed, to the, that he revealed to the media, can be seen on theintercept.com. The FBI secret files is called. It shows how they recruit informants by by finding out information about how the informants could be charged with criminal charges, assessing their psychological <coughs> vulnerabilities, trying to, and how they profile groups, how they take into account some 
people's race and religion and uh, how they infiltrate groups they are allowed to go to. They allow themselves to go to meetings without identifying themselves undercover. They can go up to five meetings without identifying themselves and they can recruit informants to go to these meetings and report back to the FBI. So if there are no pictures of Terry Albury in the media. The, the, the government has really stopped him from communicating with the public, but he's a 39-year-old black man, graduated with a degree in sociology, and the stories I've seen about him say that he's soft-spoken. Right now he's free on bond, but he's about to be in jail, and it's just not right to put him in jail like that uh, for telling the public the truth.